Welcome to the PageGate Beginners Tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going over a demonstration of how to install, configure, and use PageGate to send messages. Before we begin, the major components of PageGate are the PageGate Server, PageGate Admin, PageGate Monitor, and PageGate's GUI Client Interface. Naturally, the first step is to install the PageGate Server. In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to install PageGate in a UAC-enabled operating system like Windows 7, Windows 8, Server 2008, and Server 2012. For steps on how to install PageGate in Windows XP or Server 2003, please click on the video tutorial link provided in the transcript below. To start, we need to download PageGate, so open a web browser and go to our website www.notepage.net. Once you're at our website, look for the PageGate section in the very center of the page, then click on the Download button beneath it. Regardless of the web browser you're using, save the file. It doesn't really matter where you save it, but in this example, I'm going to save it to the desktop. After the download has finished, right-click on the PG Setup file and left-click on Run as Administrator. If you're prompted by the user accounts control, allow the procedure to continue. Click on Install PageGate Server. Click on Next on the first step. Click on Next on the second step. On the third step, if you need to change the installation path, do so. Otherwise, just click on Next until the installation finishes. When the installation completes, click on Finish. Now that we have the PageGate server installed, we can begin the configuration. When you run the PageGate admin on a UAC-enabled operating system, you'll want to go to your Start menu, find the PageGate program group, right-click on the shortcut for the PageGate admin, and select the Run as Administrator option. Since this is the first time we've run the PageGate admin, it's going to prompt us for directory locations and server properties. Unless you want to change the directory to which PageGate stores its data, you can leave the options as they are and click on Apply. You'll then be prompted to create the database directory, the archive directory, and the log directory. You should then receive a message indicating that a new database has been created and that the PageGate admin must be restarted. The next time we run the admin, you should see this screen. Click on Continue, and it's time to begin configuring the program to send messages. The first step is to tell PageGate how to send messages. To do this, we have to create a carrier in the program. Examples of carriers are Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, USA Mobility, and American Messaging. To add a carrier in PageGate, right-click on Carriers, and left-click on Add. Now for a more detailed explanation of what the protocols are and how to configure them, have a look at the protocol section of our video tutorials at the link below. Once you have a carrier created, next we'll need to add a recipient. To add a recipient, right-click on the recipient section and left-click on Add. For a more detailed explanation of what each field in the recipient setup means and how to configure them, have a look at the PageGate section of our video tutorial. For information on how to add and populate a group, have a look at our Groups video tutorial as well. So, now that we've told PageGate how to talk to the outside world, and who to send a message to, the next step is to get the PageGate server up and running. Now, there are two ways PageGate can run, as an application and as a Windows service. It is always recommended to run PageGate as a Windows service. To do so, follow the Switching Run Style video tutorial linked in the transcript. Now, before we start sending messages, there's another part of PageGate I'd like to show you. It's called the PageGate Monitor. All the PageGate Monitor does is show you what's happening as it happens. To run the monitor, you can either use the icon in your system tray, or you can use the shortcut in the Sort menu. Once you have the monitor running, you'll see these windows. The main window shows the list of PageGate's components. If the component is running, it shows up in green. If it isn't running, it shows up in red. 
To the right, you should see some log windows. The log windows show what is specifically being recorded by the PageGate server as it happens. So, if we wanted to, we could start sending messages directly from the PageGate admin right now. To do so, open the PageGate admin and expand the recipient or the group section. Find the recipient or group you want to send the message to, right click on their name, and left click on send message. When sending a message, it's important to put something for the from or the sender value. Without that information, your messages may be filtered as potential spam, so always be sure to enter a value here. Then type in a message and click on send. Since we have the PageGate monitor running, we can watch the PageGate server handle the message from start to finish. If the message is successful, you'll see it show up in the good column, or if it failed, it will show up in the bad column. The final component of PageGate that we'd like to go over is the PageGate client. The PageGate client is a graphical user interface that can be installed on any workstation that resides on the same network as the PageGate server. To install the PageGate client, run through the steps in the PageGate client installation video tutorial linked in the transcript below. After installing the PageGate client, you will need to configure it. Please run through the steps in the PageGate Client Configuration Tutorial linked in the transcript below. After the PageGate Client has been installed and configured, you should see the list of recipients you've configured on the PageGate server. To message one of the recipients, select them from the list, type in a message, and click on Send. You should notice that the PageGate Client will show you that the message is impending. As with the monitor, if the message is successful, it'll move to sent. Otherwise, it'll move to bad. This concludes the beginner's tutorial on how to use PageGate. For more tutorials, including how to download a free trial, please visit our website, www.notepage.net.